Hello YouTube, this is Frank from Architectural Aesthetics. Today in this video I'm going to teach you how to prepare your architectural graphics to achieve this high contrast white and black look. In this day and age, everybody is printing their drawings in black on white papers. Therefore I believe by going into a direction that is completely different from your colleagues, you have the chance to make your graphics stand out that much during important presentations. So without further ado, let's get into today's content. I'm breaking down my video into three different short segments. In the first segment, I'm going to demonstrate how to convert your hand sketches into vectorized drawings with white strokes using Adobe Illustrator. And in the second segment, I'm going to show you guys how to reduce unwanted distractions in your model photographs using Adobe Photoshop. And in the last segment, I'm going to demonstrate how to annotate over your model photographs using Autodesk Sketchbook Pro. Alright, let's begin with the first segment. We've all heard the statement that drawing is the most significant means for architects to communicate their ideas. Well, if you're into architecture like me, you probably have accumulated tons of developmental sketches like this just sitting around and not making their appearances to the final presentation. Well, I think that's a shame because in this day and age, when everybody is making their drawings digitally, having some nice hand sketches can be a major asset of yours. With that said, the first step in vectorizing our sketches is to take clean and nice high resolution shots off our sketches. And for this task, I recommend using a free mobile app made by Microsoft called Office Lens. It auto-corrects your shots by detecting the boundaries and edges of your sketchbook. And as you can see, these images are all taken using this app and I'm quite content with the final result. Before we begin our vectorization process in Adobe Illustrator, we have to bring up the contrast between the paper and our sketches to make it easy for the computer program to read our drawings. To do this, we'll simply just open the image we just took using Office Lens in Adobe Photoshop, then go to Image, Adjustment, then open the Curves panel, or simply just use the keyboard shortcut Command-M or Control-M if you're using Windows. And then what we'll need to do is to add an anchor point right at the middle of your curve and drag it up to a point where the paper of your sketch is completely white and your physical drawing remains pitch black. Then we save the image either as JPEG or PNG and open up that image using Adobe Illustrator. This is going to be the final piece of software we'll need to use to complete this operation, so just bear with me guys. Now we're going to open the image trace dialog from the window drop down menu and select the sketched art option from the presets. If you have the preview option toggled, you can already get a glimpse of the final result that you're gonna get. I recommend playing with the threshold slider a little bit to either tune up or tune down the details. From my personal experience, the sweet spot is around 180 or so. And if you're finally happy with the end result, you can simply click the expand button from the top of the interface to finalize your vectorization process. And lastly, we're going to select everything using keyboard shortcut Command A or Control A if you're using Windows and give everything a stroke color of white within the stroke dialog panel, which can also be found under the window drop down menu. And you'll have to give your background layer a fill color of black to fully appreciate the work you've done so far. Alright, in the second segment, I'm going to show you guys how I remove unwanted distractions in my model shots. Bear in mind, if you want your graphics to be contest ready, then nothing beats a DSLR and a clean studio setup. However, if you're just making a school project, then all you need is really a half decent smartphone, two pieces of poster boards, and some photoshopping skills. In this shot, you can see just how modest my setup is. I am placing my model on a piece of black poster board and having a person holding another piece of black poster board standing right behind my model to serve as the backdrop. So to clean it up, I first used the pen tool to carefully trace out the outline of my model. Of course, you can achieve the same effect using the polygonal lasso tool, but I just personally prefer to use the pen tool when it comes down to making selections. 
The next step was to separate the background and the bottom of the shot, also using the pen tool. Then I downloaded a large black background image from the internet and used the distort tool to place it behind my model layer to serve as the new backdrop. Then I used the same image to patch up the corner of the table and applied a combination of mask and brush tool to blend everything in. Lastly, I deployed the polygonal lasso tool to select and delete the plexiglass portion of my model because of the distracting hands. Then I patched them back up again using the transparent glass texture I found online. And that's it. The whole operation took me less than 20 minutes, and the final image looks fairly well on a 11 by 17 inch panel. Now let's get down to our last segment in which I show you guys my method of annotating atop my model photographs. So what you're seeing right now is another shot of my conceptual model. As you can see the white balance is clearly off because this image was taken under a yellowish dining room chandelier. So the first thing I did was to tune down the saturation of the image using Adobe Photoshop. And after that, I opened up the PSD file with my favorite drawing software, Sketchbook Pro made by Autodesk. In my personal opinion, when it comes down to freehand drawing, no other software can compete with the rich library of brush presets, the intuitive usability, the abundance of drafting tools, and the compactness of Sketchbook Pro. Now building upon the somber model shot, all I did was to create a new layer, grab the pencil tool with the white stroke color and just go to town with it on the canvas. And after when that's done, the last thing I did was to reopen the now annotated PSD file in Photoshop and dropped in some stock human figure cutouts to indicate the scale of my model. And after all the works are done, we lay out our images in Adobe InDesign and our graphics are now ready to go to the printing station. Alright guys, so that's how I prepare my architecture graphics to give them a white on black aesthetics. Thank you for watching, I hope you found this video informative. Please feel free to drop any comments or questions down below and I'll see all of you in the next video. Bye bye.